If China decided to invade Taiwan and the US intervened, who do you think would win that war? Of course most Americans would assume that the US would easily win such a conflict, but according to a report that was just put out by Yahoo News, years of classified Pentagon war games strongly suggest that the US military would lose that war. The Chinese have been preparing for an invasion of Taiwan for decades, but meanwhile the US military has been focused on other priorities. As a result, the balance of power in that region has dramatically shifted, and the US is at a clear disadvantage. In the fall of 2020, the US Air Force once again simulated what a future war with China would look like, and it didn't go well. Last fall, the US Air Force simulated a conflict set more than a decade in the future that began with a Chinese biological weapon attack that swept through US bases and warships in the Indo-Pacific region. Then a major Chinese military exercise was used as cover for the deployment of a massive invasion force. The simulation culminated with Chinese missile strikes raining down on US bases and warships in the region, and a lightning air and amphibious assault on the island of Taiwan. This is the first time that the outcome of that simulation has been made public. Unfortunately, the US has been on the losing end of such war games for many years. In fact, one US official has admitted that US forces in the war games have been losing faster as the years have gone by. At that point the trend in our war games was not just that we were losing, but we were losing faster, Hynote said. After the 2018 war game I distinctly remember one of our gurus of war gaming standing in front of the Air Force Secretary and Chief of Staff, and telling them that we should never play this war game scenario, of a Chinese attack on Taiwan, again, because we know what is going to happen. The definitive answer if the US military doesn't change course is that we're going to lose fast. In that case, an American president would likely be presented with almost a fait accompli. Of course a US president could always choose to go nuclear, but if we start a global nuclear conflict there is a very good chance that the Chinese and the Russians will hit us back really hard. Needless to say, nobody would win in such a scenario. Right now, however, the Biden administration has much different priorities for the US military. For example, we recently learned that the diversity training programs that were cancelled by President Trump are being reinstated by Biden. The Defense Department has resumed its diversity training efforts, after the Biden White House acted swiftly to reverse the Trump administration's controversial curtailment of such programs. The Trump administration moved last September to halt training on subjects including critical race theory and white privilege, and vehemently denounced such training programs as un-American propaganda training sessions. The US military is becoming more woke by the day, and the Biden administration is pushing the envelope in ways that the Obama administration never dreamed of doing. In fact, US taxpayers will now be paying for any US service members that would like to have gender reassignment surgery. Taxpayers will now foot the bill for gender reassignment surgery for active military personnel and veterans, with some treatments costing upward of $200,000 under an executive order signed by President Biden. Tucked inside Biden's January 25th transgender order, enabling all qualified Americans to serve their country in uniform, is a clause that repeals an Obama-era policy that prohibited federally funded reassignment surgery. This was followed up by memos from both Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and Veterans Affairs Secretary Dennis McDonough specifically stating that surgery is now an added benefit. Our military is being used as a weapon to fight the culture war, but meanwhile our ability to fight real wars appears to be diminishing. If you can believe it, at this point our military can't even seem to win a battle against bed bugs. Sailors aboard a $6 billion American attack submarine say that the vessel has been infested with bed bugs, and that their commanding officers have been too slow to address the problem. The situation on board the USS Connecticut has reportedly deteriorated to the point where sailors began sleeping in chairs or on the floor of the mess hall in order to avoid being bitten by the blood-sucking insects. This isn't some small infestation that we are talking about. One officer on board the Connecticut admitted that Navy personnel were getting eaten alive in their racks. People were getting eaten alive in their racks, one petty officer said. Another petty officer added, the best way to put it would probably be, employee abuse, but that's not really a thing in the Navy, I guess. My father was in the US Navy, and when I read stories like this I am just horrified. What in the world has happened to our military? At one time we had the greatest fighting force that the world had ever seen, but over the last three decades the entire culture has changed. 
These days, social justice and political correctness have become far higher priorities than preparing to win future wars, and that is a huge problem. Because someday the US will have to fight China, and right now we are clearly not prepared for such a conflict. Years of Pentagon war games have made it clear that we are not ready to defend Taiwan or to face off with China in any other conflict in the region. The outcomes of most wars are decided before they are ever fought. Unfortunately, it appears that the Chinese understand this far better than we do. The United States government has spent the past 70 years building up China while tearing the US military and people. The NWO is calling the shots behind the scenes and working feverishly to erode us. We need to wake up to the fact of who the real enemy is. Our military has become its own worst enemy. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.